Imported and comped guns are all the rage right now. Manufacturers have started responding by offering factory compensated or ported guns rather than just leaving it to the aftermarket. The ported Bull Armory TAC Pro has eight holes that exhaust gas and exert pressure down fighting recoil. The Staccato XC is a compensated firearm, meaning that there's a compensator that redirects gas up at the end of the muzzle, and today we're gonna look at them side by side. Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel. I'm David and this is the Staccato XC and this is the Bull Armory TAC Pro 4 and a quarter inch. Now both of these guns are super high-end guns with price tags to match with the Staccato coming in at about $4,300 and the Bull Armory coming in at about $2,250. The Staccato with its compensator feels and experiences much like a 5 inch 2011 whereas the Bull Armory is a commander side. It's much like Lighter and more nimble. But we're talking about a compensator versus ports in the barrel. So we'll talk about the differences in those technology, the result that has on the velocity of the ammunition, the fit and finish of the guns, and we'll wrap up with the shooting impressions. But first, a big thank you to our sponsors. Global Ordnance was our ammunition sponsor for this video with their Igman 124 grain ammo. Optics Planet, the code HUMM, has absolutely nothing to do with that place. Just don't even try. And of course, the handsomest and best dancers on the internet, that's right, those known as my Patreon supporters. Thank you to everybody over there. So let's start with the XC and more specifically the compensator on how it is venting gases. Now what's going on here is you have roughly a commander length barrel and then you have the final three quarters of an inch is made up as a compensator. So what ends up happening is the powder doesn't burn all when you pull the trigger, like as the bullets travel down the barrel, the powder is burning out, and depending on whether it's a fast powder or a slow powder, it depends how much muzzle flash you see. You've been in indoor ranges and you see dudes just like throwing like really big fireballs. That's because their ammo probably has a slow powder and they're shooting it out of a shorter barrel gun. So the four and a quarter inch is gonna give us the best velocity since most nine millimeter service rounds are built around a four inch barrel. So this is just north of a four inch barrel before the comp starts. Because the tip of the firearm is just about the size of a nine millimeter projectile, that means as the gas starts to expand, as it hits the expansion tape chamber, it's hitting the face of the compensator and being directed up. And that upward motion is helping reduce recoil. The other thing that's reducing recoil is it's not just the projectile that is causing recoil, it's the volume and weight of the gas that's coming out the muzzle. So if you redirect the gas up in a different direction, that's what basically makes compensators work is you're starting to experience mostly just the recoil of the projectile and not necessarily the gas that goes along with it. You know when you shoot non-compensated guns and 115s feel snappier, than the you know slower projectiles that's because there's a lot more gas usually with that 115 ammo so what's generally going to be true if your goal is reducing recoil as much as possible and getting the flattest shooting experience you can get it's usually going to be your high velocity lower for caliber weights if you want to try something silly shoot the really high velocity like 95 grain or even like 75 grain stuff that's going like 2,000 feet per second it's absolutely absurd out of these types of guns now on the other hand the bull armory has these four V8 style ports that are drilled into the barrel. So they're actually exhausting gas sort of mid-length. Now, as we discussed, the gunpowder continues to burn as the projectile moves down the barrel. So the ports are more likely to throw flames because they occur sooner with the first port showing up at about two and three eighths inches and the final port showing up at about three and a half inches. The result of that is there is going to be velocity loss because some of the gas is still you know, expanding and pushing the projectile faster. We'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. But let's talk about the ports because the ports obviously are a lot smaller than the compensator on the Staccato XC. Using the power of math, I calculated the area of the ports on the Bull Armory gun. It's coming in at just under 0.1 inches whereas the area of the compensator at the front of the gun is about 0.2 inches, nearly just shy of that. So nearly twice as much volume of gas is going to exit through the compensator than can exit through the ports. And if you consider where the push is taking place when we shoot a gun, we've created a lever system with the fulcrum kind of being right here where you're gripping the gun. So when it's trying to lift, the most mechanical advantage is gonna be 
as far out on the end of the gun as you can get it. Whereas, you know, with the bull, the ports are kind of right here. So the push of the gas, there's less gas exiting the fight recoil and that force is being applied at a less opportune place, which would be the end of the barrel. Now that all said, one of my carry guns that I use most days is a Bull Armory TAC 425. And the TAC 425 without the ports recoils significantly more noticeably than this gun does. This gun is absurd. So I realize just explaining all of that stuff to you makes it sound like this doesn't work. No, this thing absolutely works. It dumbs down the recoil to nearly the point that you can dumb down a nine millimeter cartridge, but it comes at a cost and that cost is the velocity loss. So talking about shooting, I tried three different ammo types, a 147 grain like full house low over a thousand foot per second out of a five inch gun, a 124 grain NATO load, so a 124 really moving at high velocities, and a 115 grain sort of target round. Now, based on what we just learned about the gunpowder used in ammunition, the higher velocity stuff usually uses slower gunpowder, which means that more of it is burning in the barrel. So the velocity drop on the projectiles was more noticeable with the lighter for caliber rounds. So with the 147 grain projectiles, the Staccato had about a 4% advantage of velocity. With the 124 NATO, that gap opens up to about a five and a quarter percentage increase and with the 115 grains the staccato ended up with north of a five and three quarter percent advantage if you're looking at something like a duty gun uh, you just need to make sure that you are still capturing the performance window for a hollow point to expand there may be at extreme distances the groups could open up but that's going to be beyond what are commonly reckoned as handgun distances I'm talking like 100 yards kind of stuff now, oh, great, I just opened the door. You guys are now gonna go, you could shoot handguns at 100 yards. I get it, I get it, but that's not what most people think about pistols. Did you guys know there are so many firearm experts on the internet? I guess that's kind of the pot calling the kettle black, isn't it? So let's talk about the ergonomics of the gun. Now, basically, I mean, I'm gonna summarize this for you. If you like commander length guns, you're gonna like the Bull Armory better. If you like five inch guns, you're gonna like the Staccato better. So talking about the grips, the grip module on the Bull Armory gun has a medium fissure texture all the way up to basically just under the safeties, and it is much more aggressive on the side of the gun. The front strap and back strap have basically like plastic plastic checkering, whereas the Staccato has kind of a medium fissure, or probably a fine fissure, I guess I would call it. So it does a better job than the OG Staccato frames that had like the parts of the star, but it um, it's nowhere near as aggressive as the Bull. It now it's adequate. It's it's aggressive enough to be over that line where it is absolutely adequate. The trigger guards are a little bit different. Staccato has this nice smoothed out part which makes flipping to get onto the mag catch a lot easier. Whereas the bull just kind of extends the checkering all the way hard up under there. But the trigger guard cut on the bull offers this kind of like second undercut sort of scallop thing, which when you get your support hand in to build a grip on the gun, it just is a little bit nicer and it kind of locks in more than the staccato, which has the undercut and then it sort of thins out there, allowing your support hand to get a little bit higher, but it just doesn't have sort of that radius contour that kind of locks your support hand finger in. Keeping on the topic of the grip, the magwells, if you're a wide palmed individual such as myself, the magwell on the staccato is more comfortable for big hands not a whole lot like this is just a shades of gray sort of thing and it's due to kind of this like a uh you know, more hard geometry that is used on the bull versus kind of the softer geometry used on the staccato magwell. Coming up to the slide and frame, the serrations on both guns are very, very usable. Just super, super aggressive. Absolutely fantastic. Like the super bitey on the front, they, you know, speed holes for the front of the staccato and speed holes at the top of the bull. Both guns use an optics plate system, except for staccato. If you use a Delta Point Pro, it mounts directly on the slide quite beautifully and the rear sight kind of goes into the Delta Point Pro. The Delta Point Pro actually works really well on staccato guns, whereas the Bull Armory uses a plate system and they only have the RMR footprint currently. That said, they've got a really nice set of backup iron sights that co-witness through RMR height optics. The only other bit of ergos that probably come into play is I guess the shape of the grip safety. They both have memory bumps. It's not really that big a deal, although the staccato does have a 
blunted beaver tail. It doesn't extend as far back as the bull armory does. The safeties on the staccato are a little bit more trim and sort of stay out of the way, but they don't really affect your ability to actuate. Whereas the bull safeties are more like paddles that you can really kind of bear down on as you're shooting. Moving across to fit and finish, both guns are very tight guns and, and very, very good. With the hammers back doing kind of the wiggle test, let's see if you can hear it. Let's see. You can kind of hear that tiny little bit of wiggle. This gun is actually newer and has fewer rounds through it. Whereas the Staccato XC has been in the collection for a while and been shot a bunch and you can, let's just listen. There's a very slight amount of wiggle on the Staccato XE. It is very, very tight. It's one of the tighter guns that I have gotten here recently. If you pick up a Staccato P, the fit is not the same. The Staccato XEs are fit differently because they have this island barrel, meaning that the barrel's compensator is milled out of the same piece of metal as the slide. So they have to fit kind of this male-female relationship with the slide. And as a result, the, just the level of care in these guns is higher than the typical you know c2 or p lineup the bull armory their guns the ones that get the black coating for kind of the duty self-defense guns aren't quite as tight as their stainless steel guns i reviewed the bull armory air recently and the fit on that is tighter than the fit on this not that it matters both of the guns are like super lights out accurate but you know 2011 people are constantly doing this trying to figure oh man that's tight you're like I get it, all of them are like super tight, well within uh, the point that you want them to be. Absolutely no deflection on the barrel when you pull down on, on either gun. That said, the finish of the guns, because Bull Armory is based out of Israel, they cannot use DLC coatings because of the environmental regulations they have out there. So this is a PVD. PVDs are good finishes. The guns absolutely will not rust or anything like that. It is a pretty hard wearing finish, except for, and this is my buddy's gun, you, come into contact with other metals and you will mark up the frame. My Bull Armory gun has marks all over it from being put in and out of the safe, you know, put into range bags and the such so that, I mean, it just, it takes marks better. Whereas this is a DLC coating and it's not just on the slide frame barrel. Well, yeah, that's the other thing is it's on the barrel with the staccato. Like you're getting a DLC coated barrel, whereas you are getting a stainless barrel with the Bull Armory. And also the grip safety on the Bull Armory is stainless, whereas absolutely everything is DLC coated except for the Dawson sights on that. So the fit and finish is very comparable with the finish going you know, higher end on the Staccato. The PVD is still a really, really good finish, so don't hear me say that. It's just like, you know, the DLC is a bit harder wearing. The kind of final sort of thing is that the Bull Armory has a full length stainless guide rod that you have to use a tool to take down, whereas the Staccato comes with a toolless guide rod, meaning that when you take the slide off the gun, there's a little button you push and it captures the plug for the recoil spring and the recoil spring, so it makes disassembly a good bit easier. Before moving off of fit and finish, I just wanna say like both of these guns are made very, very well. Don't hear me nuance over these differences and be like, well, that one sucks. Like, no, neither one of these guns suck. They're both amazing. They're both really, really good, so just, putting that out there. So jumping back way to the front of the video, if you prefer a five inch gun or a four and a quarter inch gun, that's probably going to inform your choice as it relates to these two pistols. Personally, I prefer a five inch gun. Now, both of these guns shoot like bigger guns, but this is a bigger gun. It weighs seven ounces more than the Bull, and it has a slight forward bias on the weight, which is actually kind of the balance that I prefer. Not a lot of forward bias, just a little bit more than what this has, which is basically perfectly balanced. The Bull Armory gun like doesn't fall down in my hand like toward the muzzle at all when I hold it like this, whereas the Staccato certainly does. So the result of that is with an extra seven ounces, this gun is more steady as far as like swinging on the target and stabilizing, flopping out of recoil and stuff like that. The Staccato XC is just a little bit nicer when you're doing kind of speed shooting and trying to color inside the lines when at speed. The Bull Armory, however, is very, very nimble because it is so much lighter. This weighs just north of 30 ounces, unloaded, no magazine, no optic. So it flies out of holsters. It flies from target to target. If you like a really fast gun, this gun is easily faster. Because it is a commander length gun, it has a more sudden sort of recoil impulse, although the slide on the XC isn't a lot slower because it is almost a commander length slide. It still has a fast cycling time, so this still 
even though it's a five inch gun and handles like a five inch gun, it shoots more like a commander style gun. As far as accuracy is concerned, as far as like slow fire accuracy at 25 yards, which is basically maxing out the base at my gun club, I don't notice a big difference that it's coming down to me, the shooter, and my ability to hold the gun steady and pull the trigger straight to the rear because the triggers on these guns are very, very comparable. Now the Bull Armory has an aluminum trigger with a modular face. So you can swap out the trigger profile for a very small amount of money without taking the gun all the way apart. They sell the trigger modules on their website. The Staccato has this kind of curved medium. I think it's a polymer trigger. I mean, it looks like polymer. I see flashing molds on it, but I kind of like how the Staccato trigger is. It provides a lot of texture and the pull weight is the same. Both are about three pound triggers. Both are very short. Both are very positive. They're both really, really good triggers. And that assists in the accuracy when you're shooting the guns both at speed and in slow fire. Now one little like bonus tip if you're going to try and shoot you know 2011 style guns like keeping slide velocity up is everything. I mean any guns that way but especially more so in tightly fit sort of 2011s. Both of these guns I cleaned right before putting them on video for you with the modern Spartan Systems gun care stuff but this accuracy oil I know you're like, oh, I just use motor oil and all that kind of stuff. Like I get it, I've used motor oil too. This stuff is gonna keep your slide speed up higher longer. Like it's faster. The gun feels slipperier with this. It's what I use on my open competition guns. I use it on all my guns now because I do believe it's better. You can save money on this stuff at modernspartansystems.com with code THM10. But feel free to make fun of me in the comments for pushing gun oil stuff. But realistically, you're gonna have to clean these guns. And let's talk about cleaning the guns because I think that this is gonna be kind of the final consideration on the differences between these guns. Compensated guns are going to trap more of the particulate that exits the muzzle and capture them at the bottom of the compensator. So what ends up happening is if you're shooting a bunch of FMJ, which most of us will be for range loads, the base of those bullets are exposed lead. So some of that lead is going to hit the baffle and deposit at the bottom of the compensator. On a long enough time scale, you will have molten lead at the bottom of the compensator you have to clean out. On high burn guns, like my competition guns, I shoot exclusively jacketed hollow points because they have large compensators. You'll still get carbon deposits at the bottom of the compensator, but that's really easy to pick out and you can even use some, you know, solvents or whatever to get it out pretty easily. The ports on the Bull Armory gun, you can see I wasn't able to quite get all of the carbon off around the uh, ports there. Basically the gas is coming up and it's hitting the slide and sort of depositing back down on the barrel and then like baking on because the slide does get a little bit hotter because of the gas is kind of venting out either side. The slide warms up a little bit more than it does on the compensated gun and that carbon gets deposited onto a very hot barrel and does sort of cake on there. I didn't see any issues with lead like bridging the ports or anything like that. That said, this this gun probably has less than, I don't know, five or 600 rounds on it. I put a couple hundred through it myself and the owner of this gun, Benjamin, I think did about the same. So it cleaned up pretty nicely. It's still pretty good, but the ports are probably gonna be easier to live with from a cleaning perspective. Eventually you do have to clean compensators and it is a pain in the butt. So between these two pistols, I mean, keep in mind price tags, this is basically 2X what this costs. This is a better shooting gun for me but this gun is ridiculous amounts of fun for a pretty reasonable price tag. So, I mean, this is a lot of fun. I mean, if you made me compete like heads up, I would probably pick this, but I am curious, this is gonna be released in a five inch version and I'm very curious to see how that would shoot because like I say, I like the way five inch guns handle better. It'd be a little bit heavier and the porting, I mean, it works, it works well. So either one of these guns is gonna be awesome and probably the envy of your gun club when you show up with them. But I would love to hear your thoughts, which would you pick? Sound off in the comments below. I appreciate you guys and as always, I'll catch you on the next one.